Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. We currently have quite a lot of Ike contracts. This build a new orbital station around Ike, explore Ike, that's uh, transfer any crew between vessels near Ike. There's a satellite in an equatorial orbit around Ike. And there is also recover Melrick and Melrick's craft from orbit of Ike. In fact, if we do that one, uh, well, as long as we EVA Melrick, we should get the transfer any crew between vessels near Ike. So unless both vessels have to be launched by us, I, I didn't say that. So there's a lot of Ike stuff. However, there is also a build a new orbital station around Jewel, and we haven't had occasion to do a Jewel mission yet. So what, and it has to have three pilots on the station. That's annoying. But uh, let's pick that up, first of all. And what I'm thinking is maybe we'll send something to Ike. This there needs to be this new orbital station around Ike that can support five Kerbals and have 2,000 units of liquid fuel. This one uh, needs six Kerbals capacity, has to have three pilots on it, but it doesn't say anything about liquid fuel. So what I'm thinking is we can do the Ike mission and then transfer that station over to Jewel using the 2,000 units of liquid fuel with our newly unlocked nerve engine, the nuclear engine, and thus complete that business. So that's the idea. But before we do that, I have some science to do on the moon. We had deployable science that we have never used before, and I would like to take care of that before I forget. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll totally forget. But also, let's finish up the upgrade. So we fully upgraded the R&D building. The tracking station is fully upgraded. The launch pad is fully upgraded. I'm going to do the VAB upgrade, so that's expensive and all. Um, I'll just go ahead and do the astronaut complex upgrade. We've passed 12 Kerbals already. I don't care about the admin building. Space plane hangar... Um, well, I guess that would be next, but I think we better get the runway first. So, runway. Alright, space plane hangar. Alright, so we've got all that, and we'll probably never get the admin building, so that is all upgraded. We have all those expenditures done. And now we're going to get some science, and then, well, the deployables might take some time. We'll see how that goes, but we might get some science from the rover. We need to send a scientist over, though, because there is a science lab on the base. That would be the most efficient thing for the procurement of science. That feels looking a little bit weird in there. I think maybe spending too much time on the moon? I'm not sure. Okay, but let's get her outside. Maybe she needs to have a stretch. So the deployable science is conveniently in the lowest one. And I'm actually going to get that EVA repair kit out. We didn't need that. And we could probably just deploy the science directly using the this thing. Let's see. So let's say... Oh, it doesn't tell me what it is when I hover over it now. Well, we just want to deploy all the things. So, one of those. That's the control station. Okay, I got that right. And that's a solar panel thing. Another solar panel thing. Well, that's as far away as it can go, so... I'm just putting it there. I guess we can pick it up and move it somewhere else later. I don't know how broadly they deploy. So, it's one of those. Put that over here. It's sort of haphazard right now. Just laying them around. Put the work light. And that's just a random antenna. Okay, so... We don't need to be in that mode anymore. Okay. Let 
light on. Uh, okay, well, that's not lighting anything that I want to light. So... I guess we can, I don't know, grab that, put that in. Oh, I can't put that. Uh, we can just put it over there and rotate it. Shift uh, E still does the finer rotation. That's good. Oh, no. Don't tip over. No. Um, oh, gosh. No, help it. Help it. No. Oh, gosh. All right. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> But that's not really what I wanted to aim it at, but all right, fine. Rotation angle. Oh, okay, we can rotate it like that. That's better. I, I want it that, that ways. Okay. So that's the goo monitor. Let's focus on the experiment control station. Get out of this mode. Oh, let me... Hmm. I don't know, did I bust these? I don't seem to be able to activate. Shouldn't I be able to do something with them? Oh, maybe I... Well, clicking myself does not... Or daffle does not particularly give us any other options. Hmm. I've read, done this properly before, but I think I've done it improperly this time. Ah, I'm knocking it about too. Uh-oh. Okay, I've consulted the internet, and what we have is there's a special icon, according to peoples. So let's see. We can't deploy it like we've deployed it here. What we need to do... So that, we'll start with the control station, obviously. Uh, I don't think we can fit it in the inventory with the other thing there. Okay, hold on. Let's get our... It's inconvenient to have to remove our EVA pack. Okay, so now we've got in our inventory. Get out of that mode. And let's say I click here. And there's this ploppable, there's this little icon here. So, okay, place the part. Now, it still doesn't work. <laughs> oh wait, it has an interact thing. Uh, F interact. Okay, we have interacted with it. Yes? Interact more? Okay, I don't know what interacting was doing. Mm, but let's try that. Let, let me just go to it and see. No, it doesn't. The situation has not improved. <laughs> okay, um, let's try comms, because they'll need that at least, and then we'll need power. So we'll just do it one at a time and see if the situation improves, or maybe they're just permanently busted now. I can't even click on this now. I'm trying to grab the goo monitor, but now it won't let me. Uh-oh. So, we've made the situation worse. <laughs> as far as I can tell, we've made the situation worse. Hmm. I'm just gonna board and go out again and see if that resets something or another. Can't even run. Oh, no, now I can. Uh, only if I turn exactly right can I interact with this one. But it doesn't seem to do anything when I interact with it, it doesn't deploy anything. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to deploy something. Um, let me try and get around to this side, so that... I mean, this side looks like how we, where we control it from, but I can't really access it. One more tracking station visit and come back and see if that helps, but I think something's busted here. I should have brought everything inside first and then tried to deploy the... I mean, now it's reading the Provodobodine Experiment Control Station. That it's reading. The others are question marks. But now that thing is not a question mark. Unfortunately, that doesn't help with everything else not working because it needs power and comms and everything. I should have not deployed all the things at the same time. Uh, just tossed them out the hatch. 
That was not helpful. Yeah, because that's deployed, these guys don't want to go back in. But because they weren't deployed properly, they're not working properly. Well, shucks. Yeah, this, this whole new uh, system messed me up. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, if somebody has a solution for this, we'll have to look into that, but... Yep. And there's a whole bit about her not being able to climb properly again. Which is weird. Sometimes only. Like right now. She's climbed up there before. But maybe it's because she doesn't have a jetpack. Can she climb now? I think something about removing the jetpack causes problems for her climbing. Okay, she's back in. At least the light works. Overdovadine station is not really, really deployed. And actually, in this view right now, we can't actually we can't switch to those experiments anymore. We were able to before, but all right, this is messed up. We do have some science to work with already though, and I think we should unlock the advanced science tech to get the convertitron, the drills, and all that business, and also the gravioli detector. Definitely the best investment here, so we're doing that. And other than that, we'll see what we need. There's a lot of possibilities. It depends. I'll start building the mission to Ike, which will transfer over to Jewel. And we'll see based on that whether we need something else or not. Okay, well, this has gotten a bit complicated, and that's because I want to do all the missions at the same time. And also, because we have to send three pilots to Jewel, I would like to return them home. So first of all, I began with that, with the Mark 1-3 command pod and some parachutes. Now, you might wonder, why am I not using the Mark 16 XL parachute and just put that at the top? Well, that's because of the whole business of rescuing Melrick. Melrick is a pilot, and so if we rescue Melrick, who needs to be rescued around Ike, then we are going to get an extra pilot and we don't have to send three, we just need to send two. So Melrick will be the third. But this contract requires us to obtain Melrick's craft. So what we're going to do is we're going to send two pilots and an engineer. And the engineer is going to attach this docking port to Melrick's craft. Also this battery so that uh, we can use the reaction wheel to orient Melrick's craft. And then we're going to use these tiny, tiny RCS thrusters to maneuver this whole business to Melrick's craft, dock with Melrick's craft, and then Melrick's craft can just re-enter the atmosphere with the Mark 1-3 pod and these parachutes and this heat shield, and thus we will recover Melrick's craft. And so the contract to transfer a Kerbal from one craft to another, just transfer any crew between vessels near Ike, well, we're possibly going to do that with the end, well, but we'd have to get inside. I know, it's all complicated, but... Anyway, we'll think about that when we get there. We'll just have to remember to do that. So that's the idea. And that's why we have a pretty big fuel tank here to return this from Jewel to Kerbin. But I still don't know whether it's enough. If we take a look at how much Delta V it has, it's not reading properly right now. It's got 2,643. But let's say we remove this and put a... It's a Mark One command pod. And I know that because, so we've got 2,448 there. We'll say with the docking port is just 2,400. And we know that because, and I know that Melrick is a pilot because when we go over to the astronaut complex, we can see Melrick. So here assigned, we see Melrick's craft and it's a Mark I command pod. So we already know this. So we don't have to wonder about it. And we know that Melrick is a pilot. So lots of courage too, which will be helpful. So we know that, and so that's how we're going to deal with Melrick. And exploring Ike, I mean, exploring Ike will be dealt with by transferring crew from one pod to another, that's fine. We'll probably be separating off this spacecraft in order to intercept Melrick, and that'll make it easier. We, uh, maybe I should 
put the oxidizer back into these tanks to refuel this, potentially. Uh, that might be excessive. I don't think that's necessary. It's a good question. So we've got some tanks with oxidizer on here, even though this is a nuclear stage. And there's one somewhere in at the bottom of the stack of Mark I tanks. But we've got mainly Mark I liquid fusel, uh, fuel fuselages. We've got the advanced nose cone. We've got those adapters and then liquid fuel tanks. I would love to have used, let's say, a tank like this that would make it easier. But of course, this is just a liquid fuel oxidizer tank and not pure liquid fuel, so it's inefficient. Uh, there is this kind of liquid fuel tank, but... That is that we would still need an adapter of some kind anyway. So uh, this allowed me to put the docking ports. You can see there. So this is our initial Ike station, which requires 2,000 units of liquid fuel and supporting five kerbals. Now it doesn't support five kerbals. There's well, it does actually support five kerbals. The, what it doesn't do is support the six kerbals we need for Jewel. But once this pod is docked to it, then it does have six kerbals. So that'll be fine. And we'll have the three pilots, and we have a viewing cupola and a docking port can generate power. I've got the solar panel, because of all this business, I've got the solar panels on pistons. We're using a lot of robotics this time, so the solar panels will extend out there like that. But we also have a scanner, and I've decided to put that on a robotics part like that, so it'll poke out. And I, because otherwise it's really hard to place the scanner in any decent way. And to counterbalance it, we've got a um, radiator on another one of these. So it'll turn out like that. And then we'll have the radiator. And they're not exactly balanced. Obviously the hinges are balanced. But then this is 0.2 tons, whereas the radiator is 0.25. So I decided to slap on an extra reaction wheel just to make sure that that's okay. Also, the nuclear engine, this nerve doesn't gimbal, so we have to worry about that somewhat. Okay, but of course we'll have the reaction wheel in both the cupola and the Mark 1-3 command pod, so hopefully that'll help, but just in case. Now, given this setup, and again we've got the antennae, so, and we want pretty powerful, they're the best relay antennae we've got, so hopefully that'll help. Once this pod is on its own, I expect it to be crude, so we don't need a special antenna on that. Um, we've got some science. We've got the magnetometer boom, and then on this side we've got a bunch of stuff, including the gravioli detector, newly unlocked, so we'll have to do that. And yeah, so given this setup though, it occurs to me that I would like the 3.75 meter tanks, because we've got the 3.75 meter engine plate here, and that would be the best fit and we don't have those tanks yet. I don't think we've got the Mark III things, but those aren't exactly the same. So that is the technology we are going to unlock next. The nuclear engine does have a god-awful obscene burn with the fuel that it has. Hopefully we're not going to be using all 5,000 meters per second at once, so hopefully it won't be too bad, but we'll see. Large volume containment unlock. So we've got that. And these are even bigger tanks, 5 meter ones. Uh, it's tempting to get the Rhino or something like that. But I think we'll just use a cluster of something for now. Specialized Control has the advanced reaction wheel. But we'll see. I think we can make do for now. Okay, well, I am inadvisedly attempting a recoverable stage again. And it is meant to be an SSTO. The vacuum delta V is 3,945 meters per second. The problem is the sea level thrust weight ratio is 1.17. Uh, it's got four main sails. The control core is actually down here at the center. I thought I, I had initially put another main sail down there uh, before I built it up to be so big and also recoverable. Uh, at that point, it had a thrust weight ratio of 2 at the surface. But then it didn't have enough delta V to get to orbit, and then I started putting the parachutes, and you know how this thing happens. Anyway, uh, so we've got a heat shield here to protect the control core. It does have an antenna, power, and an extra reaction wheel there. And so we'll hope that that's okay, but you know how this goes. Um, it, it looks solid up to about here. We've got auto strutting, of course. 
In fact, I'll just toss in some extra struts between the boosters. But they're not really boosters, but uh, you know, there's a little bit of clipping here, but not a whole lot. That was just for looks. And yeah, you can hear the nervousness in my voice about this sort of deal. Well, hmm. <laughs> With a lighter load, it'd be easier, but this is a pretty heavy load. I've added struts in various locations and then some auto strutting, but the potential for wobbliness is high. The coolness factor overall is pretty good. I feel like we could do with some SRBs, but placing them would be irritating. You know, probably have eight and then have one here, one here kind of thing. So, but. Uh, Maybe we can work it out like this. I have action. We finally have action groups because I unlocked the VAB. So I've got the parachutes on action group two. And in theory, we can abort to orbit if we need to save the crew, right? Because uh, there's uh, there's a spark engines and all that business. Aborting to orbit with the nerve is a little bit harder because of its low thrust to weight ratio. The thrust to weight ratio on these guys isn't great either. Um, not at all. Uh, well, I think it's reading this whole, the whole deal here, so that's probably the problem. Anyway, we need to select our Kerbals. Two pilots and an engineer. I'm gonna send uh, Tansy. Um, Val is less experienced than Jeb right now. And Arnard. So we're just going with the... Oh, we should sacrifice Elon. <laughs> Elon is much less uh, experienced than Val right now. Fine. Uh, Elon gets a workout. Yeah, I mean, might as well, right? If you've got an Elon, you might as well use an Elon. So, that is the idea. Hmm. Ooh, <laughs> are we gonna kill somebody here? Is it gonna be alright? Well, anyway, first of all, I need to go to the tracking station and time to the Duna window and then we're gonna have to figure out what the heck a Duna to Jewel window is in fact that's gotta be another thing okay I have time warp to the appropriate window we've got Tansy, Elon and Arnard as planned we have in the pod the docking port and the battery we are launching a very expensive mission and that is not the greatest thing and um, we've got all the blader on the heat shield on the Mark 1-3 pod. That's important. And yeah, well, SAS on, throttle is up, and launch. And we're off. Well... I'm not going to say anything. I don't want to jinx it. <laughs> I'm just going to try and pilot this as best I can, staying as close to prograde and everything. The crew does not look particularly happy. We're going steeper because the thrust weight ratio is low, but I always go too steep because I'm too used to Earth. And Earth, uh, the atmosphere is at 140 in realism overhaul with real solar system. I can probably, if I can just stay with the prograde vector, it's probably a good thing. Oh, oh, oh. You got a lot of reaction wheel control, come on. Honestly, the main sail should be pretty good at gimbling too. It's actually rather more intimidating from this view. So much shaking. I think we should just coast to Apoapsis at this point. Gonna go ahead and get the main solar panels out. I did forget to put some sort of controller on the station though. It is crew required at the moment. Which is actually sort of a problem. Uh, we can't do... There was a satellite in Ike orbit contract, but I don't think we can do that. Because it needs to be uncrewed and everything has a crew module on it. 
Okay, well that is an orbit. <laughs> and we've got some fuel remaining, so that's good. Let's see, that's decoupling that, that's fine. That's priming those parachutes. I'll take it. I'll take that staging. Now I want to test out these hinges. Deploy this stuff. Make sure that's not broken or anything. Looking good. Okay. Well. That's good. Get these solar panels out too. Yeah, we need, we probably wanted more electric charge capacity on the station. It has 200 in the cupola and that's it. Well, something for another engineer to do. Let's see about this business. Hmm? Okay, we are Woomerang launch site-ish. We are pointed retrograde conveniently. And we have comms. And our parachutes are ready to go. They have the right minimum pressure. Okay, the orbit burn. Okay, I'm gonna go with 24 kilometers. And I didn't really put a fuel priority thing, but just gonna select everything that's higher up and then move that all down to lowest tank. We are landing directly on the main sails. I expect that we're going to be splashing down, hopefully. That's the goal. So... Yeah, higher tanks seem... Clear there. Uh, there's a little bit in these conical ones. All right, and I'm just gonna put air brakes out before, just in case I lose connection. So we've got the retrograde, we've got air brakes out. Let's see. That reaction wheel is trying its best. Those main seals are super twitching. I have to tell them to lock gimbal. Gimbal locked. All right, here we go. Could be land, could be water. Either way, we're landing on the main sails, so that's dodgy as all heck. But we've got lots of parachutes. Should be enough parachutes. That is the KSC. We're passing right by it, so we will be in the water. This just doesn't have enough drag. Not like some of the other stages we've tried to recover. And it's getting hot. It's the air brakes getting hot, I think. I'm gonna bring them in. That's getting a little bit overdone there. Let's try the air brakes again. Uh. Oh, we're losing some main uh, uh, air brakes. Air brakes. We're losing some air brakes. Causing some imbalance. They are ablative air brakes at this point. We've lost all but two. So sort of sliding, actually. Well, will we be able to slow down enough to deploy the parachutes in time? They are out. That that seemed like barely the right timing. Take the air brakes in at this point. Because they might just tilt us. Well, let's see. Okay, full parachute parachute deployment brings us to a 5 meters per second. We could put the parachutes on the opposite side and then land on the tank. And maybe keep the mainsails from getting wet and all that business. I don't know if it'd be steady landing on the tank though. Okay, well, recover vessel. <laughs> if it allows me to, I'm gonna do it. Okay, so we got 94,000 back. We were a bit away from the KSC, 86.4% returned. And now on with the main mission.
Okay, we have a solution for Duna, and we are going to do the burn in 22 minutes. I'm sure the start burn time is correct in that we have a very, very long burn to do. Hopefully we won't be pointed at the surface at the start. It's looking pretty bad, though. Um, We're not that high up. We are a little, well, we're at least at our higher end, so it probably wouldn't be a problem, but it's intensely awkward. So, I think we're going to do this burn in two bits instead of just one bit. Unless nobody can just hold the maneuver node. We'll start when it's like 45 degrees. That's, the, that's pretty bad as it is. 20 degrees is usually my max, but... Next time, the orbit will be relatively straighter, so it won't be as inefficient, I think. Okay, here we go. Uh, how much imbalance we have? Not much. Okay. Yeah, because we do have some asymmetries here. Oh, and we can do the gravioli while we're here. Let me go back to this just to make sure we don't accidentally, like, re-enter or anything. Log gravity data, and transmit. We could just keep it, but nah, I'll just transmit. I didn't pack a science lab. We'll attach that to the jewel station on a later trip, especially if they tell us they want, like, a new station around Leith or something, you know. We'll just eventually join the stations together. Maybe. Leith, we might want a different station on. I'll think about it. Okay, well, that's too much deviation for me. It's only a one and a half hour orbit, so that's not too bad. I suppose we can do high over Kerbin, but there are also biomes for the gravioli detector. So we'll do, just do that. Uh, some of the science might outstrip our electric charge, especially when we get out to Jewel. Well, we've got some radiator glow. We've been running the engine for long enough that that probably should be happening. This, yeah, we're not doing a happy home and transfer here. It's a little bit off. So we might do an icky mid-course adjustment anyway. Had that nice plot and all, but it's all for naught. I can't really click on my orbit right now. Okay, well, it's an approach. 